Well, good morning, folks. I'm out here at Glazer's Geezer's Garage this morning. And what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go through. I made a decision to add more bracing on the birdcage. I have the H frame, but I, I've decided to add some cross bracing uh, in the doors or in the door openings, I should say. I also decided to add some foot pads or locator pads going from the H frame down to just touching the rocker. So that gives me, because I have to modify and I should say repair some rust on the bottom of a couple of the pillars, the lock pillars and one of the hinge pillars. So these pads will allow me to get the proper height uh, and the cross bracing and some extra uh, bracing across the front, lower portion of the hinge pillars and an extra brace across the lower portion of the lock pillars. So that's why I did that. I want to make sure nothing moved. I don't have a jig like Midyear Mitch does uh, because I'm not sure I'm going to be doing multiple uh, C2 Corvettes like he does, but I I wanted to get some extra bracing. I took a bunch of measurements too. So let's get into how we uh, added on to our H-frame. So my concern is if we pull the rockers off, I have this nice H frame in here, told everything forward and back, but there's nothing that says, because I have this outrigger here, because when I pull the rockers off, I can't hold it up with the floppy uh, fiberglass floorboard. So I bought these adjustable, what they call pipe racks. Which are pipe really stands. nice. And by the way, these are very inexpensive, $58 on Amazon and very heavy duty um, and they fold up and you can store them easy got even got a to-go handle on it so um, what we're doing then so when I, if I put pressure here all I could think was possibly this roof and windshield may flex up so our idea is to do cross bracing here to keep the, this from flexing up so that's what we're going to do and I had some of this leftover heavy duty shelving angle and so we're just going to use that. Let's get started. So your fear is when you cut that bottom rocker out. This whole thing raises up. Yeah. Because I'm relying on the rigidity of the coop birdcage up here to hold it. And it probably would, but I don't want to take any chances. So I'm doing a cross bracing here. This cross bracing will keep it from moving up. And this one will keep it from moving out. So... I'm not an engineer, so you got to think through this, guys, but what I'm going to do is what's going to be left on this is this is out. So cutting that there. I guess I don't, yeah, I need to cut that out because this is going to be bent back like this, if you can imagine, the way the angle works. I could cut this out, notch it, and make it more rigid, but I don't. I really don't think I need this piece, that rigidity. So this is the bend point. So this is gonna be bent, so when I cut it here, cut here and cut here, bend this like this, and that'll go right in that. And then I can tack weld it from here where I can get to it with a little die grinder so that I can grind the weld out and not mess up my solid bird cage. By the way, I'll tell you guys about this vice right here. Uh, since Roy's here filming, uh, this vice belonged to our Uncle Ed. Uh, and I always say that Ed Glaze was my inspiration for a garage. And what I mean by that was when we were kids, Uncle Ed lived about a block away from Roy back a little dirt road, and he was a stock car racer. One of the best in Barberton, at Barberton Speedway. And uh, Ed had a wonderful garage, had welders, had tools, and he really didn't mind. We'd take our go-karts, our bicycles, whatever we had, we'd get to Uncle Ed's garage and we'd work on them. He just, his, one of his rules were put the tools back. We didn't always do that. We heard about it sometimes from our dads. 
because Ed wouldn't say much to us, but he would say something to our dads about it, and then our dads would get on us. But anyway, make a long story short, Ed passed away a few years ago, and uh, my aunt was liquidating some of his tools and stuff, and I went out and looked around, and I have a lot of tools, as you can see, but I looked over at the workbench, and I saw this vise. Now, I can tell you right now, it did not look like this. The jaws were loose. It was beat up. Uh, it was in really bad shape. It didn't have the tightening mechanism here. And I asked her if I could buy that from, from her, and she said, no, you can have it. So I brought this back, and I rebuilt it, repainted it, fixed the jaws, bought, got new bolts here, fixed it all up. This whole thing was cracked here. I re-welded it, uh, got it working again. I asked my uh, Ed's oldest boy, Ed Jr., if he would like to have it. And he said, no, you keep it. Keep it in your shop. So this is a memory of Ed Glaze my inspiration to having what I have today. So, go what, Eddie Racer. Go Eddie Racer, go. That's what we used to yell when you go around the track. So. Or, I could take it over to the, to the brake press and bend it. You're making me sh laugh when I shake the camera, or shake the camera when I I just want to show guys that the old way to do it still works too. Needs to go a little bit more. Somehow, somewhere. Oh, I bent that. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, is that going to help us or hurt us? That I might. Hurt. Yeah, I think it needs to go the other way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we can do that. Again, we're not worrying too much about side force on this. We're worried about the. Oh, yeah. You right there? Okay, what I'm going to do is already holes in this. Give me a. You okay there? Yeah, right there. Put me a mark. Give me a hole through there. It's this hole right here. Like probably a quarter. Let's see what we got. That's a quarter. I'm gonna go up to a. You gotta have these guys. Save you a lot of time. I'm gonna go with five sixteenths. So let's open these holes up to five sixteenths and drill a five sixteenths hole there. As you can see, my drills are very organized. Not when I get happy working, I just throw them back in here and I get a search for it. Oh look, the five sixteenths is right in its spot. All I had to do is look. It won't be after I'm done, but. Okay, I'll get my handy dandy. 20 volt, you know what? I really should get money for this because I always advertise D-Wall. That's reverse, it can't do much. We'll have to get a hold of Walt. Walt, hold of D. Walt. Have to get a hold of D-Wall. D-Wall. Voila. How's that? Yeah. Now I want to do something very dangerous. Drill toward me. <laughs> I got a roll bar now. Don't have the leverage. the leverage boys try to make it halfway straight you know straight enough all right get that in touch 
I'm not going to tighten the bolt yet because I've got to modify that in. Some minor details. Best way to get metal working tools is to have an old vocational school because they don't use them much. These things sit idle for hours. And this came out of Mahoney County Joint Vocational School. in then and drill our hole and tack weld this actually right here where I can get to it. Hmm. Now what I gotta do is bend this. Give me a little bend here. Let's do this one in the press. So all you do is stick it in here like this. It's a pretty thick metal for this press but it's a small it's a short piece, so it shouldn't be too much pressure on it. Lock it in place. Grab one of the handles. Watch the metal rack. That's one of the toes. Simple as that. Lock it lock. Mm -hmm. I think if we just get everything in there. Could be up here a little more, huh? Get this out. Come on, test a little bunch. It's close. I don't like to use my other tables for that because. Same. By the way, if you guys were wondering, that's probably about 13.234 degrees. <laughs> yeah, I'm too far. It's all right, I can bend it back. But I like it. I like the bend. Take a little bit out. Get on my one to 12.563. Go ahead and mark my hole. I guess I could clamp that in place and drill it. People are going to yell at me for putting that up there. It's all right. 
Well, that'll give them something to complain about. I've been yelled at before. Yeah. Just this morning. Oh, no, that's not you. I'm sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> Probably go, could go a little faster. It is a high speed drill. But... Well, that you gotta was, be careful you don't burn your bits up when you go high speed. That was high speed. You just gotta be careful. I say that, but this is my overflow. This is, by the way, I'm sure you guys all have this. These are bolts that need to be separated. When you get done, you just throw bolts in there, and then every once in a while I have time, I sit here and separate all my bolts. But I'm busy right now. He's doing a 63 split on the coop, so. Sorry. All gonna come together, guys. And I should, once I think I have it fitted, I should just cut the other ones exactly the same. I'm just checking it out for fit. We could put a bolt right through there right now just to hold everything we in could. place. And then we would get an idea of where we at. Yeah. If there's any big oopses or just a smaller oops. Mm -hmm. And again, how these go in is not critical because they're all going to be just tacked in place as long as they're... Obviously, we're not going to reuse this. If I was going to make a jig that I was going to reuse, I would probably be a little more precise. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're going to push it back to where it's flush. Yeah, but that one I have to have way over here to get flush, which is weird. I don't know if the, it doesn't matter. This is just a pad. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, it's not, it is closer than, see, that one's about, how far is off the edge is that one? Uh, base strong quarter. Yeah, strong quarter. If I do that, then I'm putting it way back over there, like that. So it could be that the tube is just, or it could be this jump right here. Or it could be the tube. So if I do a strong quarter like that, put that about like that, I can bring, I can bring that over, but it's, it's, I don't think these rockers are that even from the factory. Yeah, I think they slope in towards the car. I think they do too. They're definitely not square with mm -hmm. what you're doing. So I could just tilt this out and weld it. You know, put a clamp there. Like I say, all of this is for is to get the clamp. Yeah, and your goal is to get it back to where it's at. And this is pretty, right? That's all. So it doesn't matter. This isn't nothing for forward and back. This is just up and down. Yeah. As long as that pad is even there. That's right, I gotta clean these too, don't I? And then I can just go toot. Okay. Guys, I have this gun apart. What's inside this gun when you pull this is a little trigger, but I think this plastic's getting worn enough and things are getting worn enough, it's not making contact. So I think what I'm really going to do is probably get a whole new. I looked up, this gun's so old, they really don't make parts for it. So, but I have to get a whole new setup from here out. So it was a little expensive, so I've been holding off. But I guess the day it absolutely quits working, I'll have to go get one. Look at that. I think I had to turn the other way. There. Right there. This is the one that was a little off. 
thing. So we're pretty good there. I think I'm going to go with it about right there. Just put a clamp here. Yeah, that's really close to the other side, and when you clamped it that time, it pulled it back to the middle of the yeah. rocker, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? Buzz there, and buzz there, and then... Okay, now we can move the water back over here. What I've decided to do is go ahead and add a cross member here at the lower portion of the hinge pillar, or I should say the lock pillar, all the way across because I really don't want those to deflect or move side to side. I know I have them supported here, but if there's any tension in that bar, it could, it could misalign it. So I'm just going to add this for cautionary purposes, tack welded on each side, and just go from there and start tearing into these rockers. What we're going to do is review one more time what I've done to reinforce this birdcage before I pull the rockers off. I may have gone overboard, but you know what? It's okay. First thing I did was make an H frame, as you can see here. I kind of referred to it as should be an I frame because it looks more like an I to me. But anyway, that is bolted to the uh, lock pillar position in the hinge pillar position but to give uh, some added support so it doesn't twist or distort I've added an X frame on each side as you can see I've also added what I'm going to call these feet they are not attached to the rocker but they go right down to the rocker so that gives me a fixed position in relationship to where I'm bolted on and these are all bolted tight so that I have that front and back on both sides, so four points to bring that rocker, metal rocker, up to because I'm going to have to do some modifications and repair the bottom of these, the lock pillars. So as you cut material off the lock pillars, you have to have a reference point. This foot is my reference point. The other thing I've added is I didn't know how secure they would be. Uh, sideways so i've added a tack welded across member as low as i could get here without cutting into my floor to help give it some rigidity left to right i did the same thing in the back as you can see here there's a one by one angle iron going to cross tack welded i can grind those off pretty easy when i'm done i also mitch mid-year mitch suggested that i Take a lot of measurements. So, what I have here, bird cage measurements. So, and I numbered them. So, M1, as you can see here, M1, and I marked exactly where I took the measurement from, as you can see here and here. I recorded that. M2 is from this edge here, as you can see, down to a mark I have on my on my H frame, and I have I have a magic marker exactly where to measure to right there. I've, I've actually taken a measurement, what I'm calling M5, just in case these tack welds would break loose from this point to this point. And of course, M4, M3 and M4 is the same measurements from the other side. M3 is from here to here. M4 is from here down to the H frame. And then M6 is the measurement from this outside edge of lock pillar to outside edge of lock pillar. That is basically just in case something moves, it's a reference point to recheck right before you weld things in place after you fix them. And it's also a little bit of security should one of your spot welds break loose, something like that. Not quite as difficult as what Mitch does because he's got a lot of pieces he's putting together. I have a pretty solid coop 
bird cage on the top that's going to hold some stuff in place, but you never know what kind of built up energy is are in those pieces until you cut them loose. So in other words, if, if I'm not going to, but if I were to cut this post here, it doesn't necessarily mean that post will stay lined up. It could spring up or spring down based upon what uh, energy is built up in that, depending on how they put it together and how they welded it. But if you guys have done anything like this, you know what I'm talking about. You cut it and all of a sudden the thing springs up. So that's why you do these cross members and take measurements. But anyway, I'm talking too much. I just want to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing. Some people might be do, doing more. Some people might do less. But if I did overkill, that's okay. I don't, I don't mind. But we're going to start getting into these rockers now. So let's keep going. But yeah, I think we're all braced here. I think the next... Thing we're going to do is start cutting these rockers off see where we're at so thanks a lot remember to subscribe and to like that helps our channel i'll be on i'm just going to be transparent with everybody we're at about 330 subscribers we need 500 i told you guys before my grandson's done all the editing and any money we might make on uh, youtube is going for his college fund so if you guys could help out you're helping him and uh, we appreciate it. And watch the videos. Watch the full video. That gives us watching minutes, too. So I don't you guys know that, how that works. But if you get monetized in uh, YouTube, you've got to have 3,000 hours of view time and 500 subscribers. So but we're well on the way. We've only been doing it since Thanksgiving. So we're pretty happy. But just help us out. Like and subscribe. Appreciate it. And share. Share my videos. Appreciate it. If you know any other gearheads or guys that like Corvettes, share it with them. Appreciate it. Talk to you later.